I think the stars have aligned for India. India now has a seat at the table. And India is taking us on board. India is investing in humanity. When India is successful, they give you the tools also to be successful. I want India to know that the rest of the Global South is with you for that journey. And we are going to do it together. Together, we're going to make this journey for humanity. The fact that India itself, as a developing country, extends the hand of friendship to us is something that we are eternally grateful for. The fact that you are able to share with us, in spite of your own challenges, having to pull out millions, hundreds of millions of people out of poverty, but yet you have taken the opportunity to reach out to us. I personally want to thank you, the people and government of, of India, for reaching out to us at a time of such need. I also sort of do a double take when I heard the expression of, of vaccine diplomacy. I wouldn't call it that. I think it was just extending the hand of humanity. I think there are other countries involved in vaccine diplomacy, <laughs> not India. I know that India will, is, is a country that's, you know, historically very polite and you will not say or ask for certain things. But I will, I will say today that we believe that India is emerging as a very important player on global affairs. And we believe that India deserves to have a permanent seat on the United Nations Security Council. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, bilaterally diplomatic relations between the two governments of India and Samoa were established in 1970. The focus of cooperation has mainly been in the areas of health, education, information technology, and capacity building. To conclude, I would like to formally express my government's gratitude and appreciation of this important initiative, the India UN for Global South, delivering for development. St. Lucia looks to India as the nation which has stepped forward to find a middle ground in the east-west, north-south divide to build the necessary bridges, command respect, and have something to show for it. I must accentuate India as a legitimate partner and in fact, a partner that has exported models of development that would show countries how to chart the true and real development of the various regions. In addition, as the world continues to witness the redistribution of power, India is increasingly taking its rightful place in this multipolar world. The rest is inevitable. India is rising, rising rapidly, and nothing can stop India right now. But India is also taking us along to the promised land. May God continue to bless India. Undoubtedly, Prime Minister Narendra Modi deserves recognition for championing the inclusion of the African Union in the G20. In many respects, India stands as a stalwart leader of the Global South to speak with my heart. India, as my colleague from Guyana just said, in the 1990s, India was a country with a closed economy. 1990s, that's recent history. And look now where India has come. But India has not forgotten the other countries. This is not a country saying, bye-bye now, I am going to the decision-making table. India is bringing the Global South together at the global, at the decision-making table. India's legacy of contributions serves as a guiding light, encompassing endeavors such as championing democracy, promoting women-led development, and being among the pioneers in adopting the UN's global goals. Today's event echoes the messages of the G20 Vashudaiva Katumba Katum I'm determined to say this correctly. <laughs> I practiced. 
Vashuraiva Katumbakam. India is said to become the second largest global economy in the next 25 years. The world remains persuaded of its resilience and commitment. In the United Nations, India continues to walk the talk. The India-UN Development Partnership Fund is hailed by many as the blueprint to South-South cooperation. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.